file has large set of records and now you wanted to process these records and transform this into an FBDA file format and then push it to ERP cloud. So let's say this is a scenario. So I'll not try to design the entire scenario, but I'll try to give you a little best practice on how you really wanted to do this. So, okay, so let's say download file. So this is an FTP connection which I took. So FTP connection has multiple script. So right if uh, you can list up files in a given directory, you can move a file from one directory to another directory of FTP location, FTP server, uh, delete and download a file. So whenever you're processing files which are larger than 10 MB uh, and you're fetching them from FTP server, so the good, good practice and the mandated practice is you always have to download the file rather than read a file. Okay, so let's click this. So there's, there's a difference between read a file and download a file. So reading a file, what OYC does is it reads the entire file in memory. Okay, so and downloading a file is basically OIC fetches a file and writes it into internal virtual file system. Okay, so that's the difference. So if you have a file which is which is which is more than 10 MB, right? So what you would do, you would certainly download the file because it is a to read a file in memory. If you are processing files which are more than 10 MB, the pra recommended practice is to download a file. Okay, so let's say you download a file. Um, um, so okay, so let me put in some directory structure here. Okay, so say invoice star dot. Okay, so invoice. This download. Download directory. Download directory is basically um, uh, the direct uh, uh, where your actual uh, file that you have downloaded from FTP uh, lives uh, in the storage space of OIC. So, well, which directory you wanted to download it? So, you really don't have to create any directory. Uh, you can stage um, ERP, something like that. So, OIC figures this out. It creates a directory internally with the structure what you have given. So you don't need to, you, however, you don't have access to the virtual file system. So you'll not be doing, in, you'll not be doing anything. Directory here, and um, so I, I can go next and uh, click on done. So where does this download to? It downloads to oh, a location in virtual file system, which is slash stage stash slash ERP. That's where my file is, which is greater than 10 MB. So, and then now I have my file in, um, in the virtual file system after I did a download from FTP server. So the next thing what I wanted to do is, um, so, so there is a stage file action. If you type stage, um, you'll get a stage file action. That's the same thing which is shown up here as well. So in the actions, you'll notice that there's a stage file action here. So how do you read files which are per persisted in the virtual file system of OIC? So the way you have to read the files is using the stage file action. So how do I read that file which is FTP server? Okay, so I'll say this as read file in segments. Okay, so I'll read file in segments is the operation I'm using. And in the stage file action, um, you have a lot of operations and actions you, in, you can perform, right? So similarly like FTP, right? So you can, you have operations like read entire file read file and segments. So these are, so what's the difference between read entire file and read file and segments? Again, when you're, pr when you're using a stage file action and uh, let's say in, in your virtual file system, you have a file uh, that you have downloaded from FTP server is more than 10 MB, right? Again, we mandate you to you read file in segments than reading the entire file in memory. It's because will it make sense if I download a 100 MB file um, uh, using FTP server and persist in the virtual file system and I read the file, 100 MB file in memory, uh, does it make sense again? It doesn't really make sense, correct? So um, always try to use read file in segments. Okay, so read file in segments, um, you can always go and reference the file in segments to, uh, to the, the, to the uh, download directory here. So I can what simply say here, specify the folder. So what's the file reference I, I need here? So the reference to file system is from, um, from the download of FTP, correct? So from the download file, 
I, I have a response. So give me back a file reference from FTP server download file which I've done. So I can simply just go and uh, put this uh, file reference here and save. So now my stage file in segments is referring to a file which has which is which has been placed in virtual file system. Okay. And now I also have a choice to process this file sequentially. So what does it really mean is um, by default um, the file which is which is getting read. So what does the file contain? The file contains CSV records. The file may contain or uh, XML um, uh, elements. It's XML snippets, XML-based records, right? So when you try to say process sequentially, what will happen is so when the read file in segments, read file in segments is meant to read the file in chunks. Okay, so reading file in chunks is always optimized way. And behind the scenes, we use a map reduce algorithm to uh, spawn up threads and try to do as try to leverage as much processing power as possible to process uh, to execute to process that particular file that you're reading so when you say process sequentially it means that you're reading the chunks and processing it in sequence and if you don't say anything you're saying that read the chunks and process it in parallel so process it in parallel gives uh, you uh, gives you a lot of, I mean, a lot better performance because OICD identifies dynamically what amount of pa computing power or resources is available, and accordingly it spins up threads and tries to process the file in segments in chunks in parallel. So this is really an optimized way to read a file there. Okay, so then I, when I read the file in segments, let's say this is a CSV file. Uh, let me quickly pick up a CSV file just for the sake of the. Uh, let me just find out uh, a CSV file from my system here. Um, just give me a moment. Um, oh, my project. Okay, so just figuring out one CSV file, guys. Just give me a moment uh, to show you. Okay, so I got one. Okay, so I got um, one. Uh, don't worry about uh, uh, what the CSV file is all about. It's an auto invoice import file. Um, but um, so let's give invoice RN and invoice um, invoice RSN. And uh, this is a CSV file. Okay. So I'm passing the CSV file which is coming from the source system and I'll click on done. So what am I doing? So if you see, if you notice this, let me put horizontal oriented to horizontally. So here uh, we have read file in segments. It has put uh, a kind of a, um, a, um, a kind of a scope here. Right? So what is that is, so now when you, let's say you're trying to uh, transform this source file into a target FBDI file, right? So let's say I use um, something like a stage file action again to transform an, uh, uh, this particular file into an FPDI file, right? Uh, FPDI, let's say, okay? So, and I want to write the file here. Specify the file name. I'll just put something. I'm not going to execute this over. Um, okay, so fix this and uh, specify the output directory here. Okay, so in which in which place you wanted to write? So let's say I write it into ERP out. This is a this is a so what you're trying to say in this wizard is uh, from where you wanted to uh, read. I mean, what is the file name you wanted to write? Sorry, for where, what is the file name you wanted to write and which in which directory uh, you wanted to put this particular file FBDI file, right? So transform the FBDI file. So now in this particular wizard. You're trying to write a file in chunks, okay? And um, it's always when you're trying to write the file in chunks because um, so it's good to have it in appended mode because you wanted to write it into write it to a single file. Writing it to multiple file doesn't make sense, right? So because it's all single FBDA file you wanted to do. So append to existing file and uh, go next. And uh, let's say you wanted to write it in a particular format. Again, you can choose a format. So this will ideally be your FBDI uh, format that you choose to do. Let me just pick up the same thing. Um, yeah, let's say uh, our interface lines are. Yeah, so 
um, okay, so let's say this as RA um, RN and RA RSN. Okay, so this column headers is I'll remove this. Yes, I'll not execute this. I just wanted to show you uh, how you really um, uh, would be doing, right? So this, the, as a best practice. So in this particular integration, what you have done, there's a schedule integration and it's, um, um, it's kicked off a schedule. You're getting a file from FTP server. You're downloading the file. You're not reading it in memory. And then you're reading the file in chunks because once you download it, it's written to an a virtual file system. And using a stage file action, you're reading the file in segments. So the segments by default, it reads 200 chunk of records. So for example, if you get an XML, it, it reads 200 XML elements based on the node that you have mentioned. If you are, if you are processing a CSV file, it processes 200 rows at a, uh, for a single chunk. So those chunks will be many. So these chunks, number of chunks will be decided by OIC at runtime based on the current processing power, uh, available resources and all that. So um, it's always, uh, and it uses a complex algorithm, as I said, behind the scenes to execute this whole file here. So now what you're trying to do is you read the file in segments and you're writing the file in segments, but in append mode. And uh, here you can write your own transformation logic to write uh, the BDFL, probably something like uh, you wanted to do a few mappings here. Right? So just for the sake of finishing this, I'll not be executing, but uh, so, so this is my interface, how it looks like, right? So this is my FBDI, okay, so go on, ex expand. So, yeah, so I have not used, used, uh, used header lines. That's why it, it puts a C1, C2, C3, but it's a fair idea to always put some headers as such. And uh, um, this is my read file and segments, okay? So this is my source. So, so you might be doing some mapping here, right? So um, probably these are a few things that you wanted to map and all that. Yes, so just did for the sake of the demo. Let's close this. Um, apply. Okay. Oh, outside this. Uh, in action, simply and um, uh, imp uh, import FBDI file that you've written and just go next and uh, use the option called FBDI here and uh, probably you wanted to choose something like um, um, import auto invoice, you can do that basically. Okay, so, so let's see if it takes a while, then uh, we can go back to our presentation. So let's see. Um, well, um, okay. So import uh, auto. It's because I'm doing an auto, auto import auto invoice job, right? So I'll use an auto invoice. Um, I'll just go next. I'm not interested in a callback and finish this guy here. So here, uh, now, uh, right? So I need to pass a file reference to my FPDI, correct? So for that, um, so. I can, so here the, the file that you have written using stage file action, right? So it's not available here. So you'll have to make a note of this, right? So uh, if you're writing uh, an, a stage file, a FBDF file, you'll ha it's better to create a variable well ahead in advance uh, before, because this is like a scope construct here, right? So whatever, uh, um, you're creating, right? So they don't, you don't have, uh, uh, you don't have access to these particular variables. So you can create a reference to this stage file uh, ahead of this uh, particular integration, like uh, initiating variables, and then that, that particular stage file reference you can refer to your FBDI uh, file here, so that you can map the file reference of write that you have done to the FBDI, so that you can send the final FBDI file. And by the way, how this particular things get executed is. Um, so till the time the file is found, right? So the end of file is found in this particular number of segments. Uh, till there is an end of file, it keeps uh, finishing this process uh, chunk by chunk. And finally, when there are no more chunks available, right? So the final file um, is uh, is written uh, obviously in chunks, and then the final file can be used for our FBDA job. So this is how 
uh, we recommend you to go and uh, leverage large file processing. So like now trying to process files which are larger than 10 MB okay, and uh, uh, less than 1 GB. You can process as much bigs as big. Exactly. Uh, so this uh, best practice suggests, um, and I kind of indicated all of these uh, segments in my demo. So, and this is the uh, indicative integration that you have to design. Okay, and this is this needs to be mandated uh, as a best practice in every design that you do when you're handling large files in OIC. So. Hope